in the next few minutes i am going to talk about the methodology we are going to adopt for building and implementing electronic circuits within this particular course so i'll be initially talking about how to use arduino which is an open source microcontroller board for interfacing with sensors and actuators for executing for executing projects so first maybe you can start with an application so if you look to your right this is a project which was implemented by one of the teams in section 10 in the last semester in this diy project course so the project as such was to use moisture sensor which is embedded over here into the soil in the pot so the objective was to use the reading of the moisture sensor in order to decide when to switch on this particular water pump so the logic that is implemented is you check the moisture level if it goes below a certain critical level then the arduino board through an npn transistor switches on the water pump and the water goes from this particular sump into the pot as the water seeps into the soil the moisture level in the soil rises and when it goes above a certain critical level then it is detected by the arduino board and the water pump is switched off once again using this npn transistor so here is a very simple application where the sensor is the moisture sensor the actuator is the pump so using the using something like this arduino boards you can create systems you can create some very useful systems so uh, i think it might be useful to give you a very brief introduction of what this board is before i get on to the sequence of steps that we are going to adopt so what you are looking over here on the left is a schematic of the arduino board with various pins that are labeled now anything that you use you need to know how it is going to be powered and how the logic is going to be placed into the board so over here you can power this particular board using a usb cable that for example can be connected to your computer the usb cable will be used for both powering this particular board and also for transferring the data both ways meaning you can write a program logic on the computer and write it into the board and also whatever data you're getting from the sensors you can send it back from the board into the computer now this particular device can either be powered using the usb board usb cable or it can be powered using a dc power input uh, the dc power voltage needs to lie between 7 and 20 volts now you can see that there are a whole lot of pins on the left side and on the right side of the board now some of the pins are basically the power pins so the board can either supply 5 volts uh, the board by default is going to supply 5 volts uh, so you are going to connect whatever sensors or actuators you have between 5 volts and ground now in addition to the power pins you have got some analog input pins a0 to a5 basically six analog input pins so there are some sensors for example lm35 sensor which gives the output in the form of a analog signal and whenever you want to read data from these kind of sensors you would connect them to the analog pins then on the right side you have got digital pins starting from this pin number 2 to pin number 13 okay so you have got 12 digital pins and out of these 12 digital pins now the digital pins can either be used as input or output pins out of these 12 six of them can be used as pwm pins meaning pulse width modulated 
pins rather than just having a simple on or off you can actually generate you can actually generate pulsed dc signals so um, as soon as you power up the arduino this particular uh, power indicator green led is going to glow now let us see as to how we are actually going to use this particular board how are we going to generate the programs which are to be implemented on this particular board so whenever you want to imp whenever you have a certain uh, project that you want to implement with arduino in this course you are first going to create the circuit layout on a web browser based free uh, software called tinkercad so all you need to do is go to this website create an account and you are good to go so you would create an account on tinkercad and using some drag and drop options you are going to create a circuit layout like the one which is shown over here the circuit layout which i have shown over here is for implementing uh, implementing traffic lights logic so i have got red orange and green led lights and they are going to glow in a certain pattern so this i am going to implement it on tinkercad additionally i also have placed a blue led which whose switching on and off i am going to control using this particular push button so first thing that you do is create a circuit layout on tinkercad now once you created a circuit layout then you have to then you have to create the logic which you want to implement on the arduino board for that you are going to make use of something known as blocks so blocks are put into these different categories input control output math notation variables so using these blocks once again it is something like you drag it into the workspace enter some parameters over here in order to create the logic for instance over here i am saying that uh, first thing that you do is you go to this uh, digital pin 4 so you go to pin number 4 and set it to high that is basically 5 volts you keep it at 5 volts for 3 seconds and then take it to zero so the red led is supposed to glow for 3 seconds and then switch off after that the pin number 3 which is connected to the orange led is going to glow for 2 seconds and then again it's going to switch off and lastly the green led is going to glow for uh, glow for 4 seconds and then switch off and sorry switch off now uh, whatever code you put in over here it runs in a loop okay so once uh, you have red switching on for some time orange switching on for some time and then finally green switching off for some time then once again the red is going to be on so you create a circuit layout you create the logic using these blocks and then after you do that tinkercad autom has an option for you for you to automatically get this particular logic in text format okay so you select the text option and it gives you the text format of the logic you have created so you simply copy this particular text and you open the arduino you open the arduino ide ide standing for integrated development environment so you paste this particular code into the arduino ide you save it as an appropriate file name you compile this code this tick button is there that is called compilation button you compile it and then you upload the code onto the physical circuit so once you do that then well this is uh, i have implemented it on an arduino and breadboard and this is what i got just give it a second hello all so what you are looking at right now is uh, the electrical circuit which we have just made on uh, tinkercad 
for the traffic lights where uh, the red is switched on for uh, three seconds and then the yellow for two and the green for four seconds. I have also made a circuit over here for uh, switching on this blue LED light using this uh, push button. So over here, if I press this particular push button, then the blue LED switches on and when I release it, then the LED becomes off. Over here, an important point to remember for the push button is that the two pins on this side are shorted and the two pins on the other side are also shorted. And uh, the connection between this side and this side is made when we push the press the push button. Okay. So even though they give you two leads on each side, you are only supposed to be using one of them for the push button. All right. So what we are going to do next is uh, first I am going to show you how to generate the circuit layout blocks and then the text code on the Tinkercad and then after that I am going to show you how to make the connections on the breadboard in order to prepare this particular circuit layout. Thank you.